Hey, happy Sunday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Now, this extreme pattern is about to start this evening. Damaging winds, potential tornadoes for today and tomorrow, and the severe weather is going to go to the southeast the day after that. Plus, a chance for this wave that we've been watching for over a month now that it could form up definitely by the Eastern Caribbean and could become a major hurricane for a lot of people. So we definitely need to watch this next one very closely. Now you already have thunderstorms and snow coming back on the wraparound of this system. It is still dropping a lot of snowfall, especially in higher elevations. But once we get to six o'clock and seven o'clock tonight, then we're gonna have this big line of severe thunderstorms that could produce potential tornadoes. Now when this line comes through six, seven, eight o'clock, it could produce potential tornadoes out of these cells as it comes across all evening long. And this is gonna start right around sundown, so there's a good chance for nocturnals as well. Then when we go for tomorrow, there's a good chance for this to lift up in the south, become all these storms in the south central, and chances for tornadoes down there as well. Now I'm only gonna show you high resolution rapid refresh, that is the best weather model to look at. NAM 3K always overdoes it, and it's always a little bit different areas than what is actually going on. But you can see as you go into six and seven o'clock tonight that your temperatures get pretty warm. You get a lot of warm temperatures on the east side. Now, once you get to five, six, and seven o'clock, you have all this very warm temperatures bringing up these dew points, chances for severe weather. While you have all this cold air coming in on the west side of this system, and with the wind chill, it is going to be very cold. Even the higher elevations get up to negative 14 degrees. So very cold temperatures coming in, bringing all the snowfall, very warm temperatures, bringing the severe weather aspect of it. But once you go to 9 and 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock tonight, then you have them storms popping up. It is going to be late afternoon. Why are you getting a very cold wind chill across the mountains? Now it's getting down to negative 20 and almost negative 30 degree wind chills in the higher elevations as this system moves through and it will be for tomorrow as well in the south you have some warm temperatures you have a lot of strong dew points and cape good chances for tornadoes for a slight brief period in the afternoon as well a lot of cold temperatures and wind chills coming with this system but you can see the west side of the u.s is getting all these cold temperatures with these wind chills and the coldest so far will be exactly tomorrow morning Monday morning is when you have some very cold wind chills passing through. A lot of people in the teen temperatures still got negative 20 plus degrees in higher elevations. Your temperatures are a little bit easier than that. So it is your wind chills that you're going to be feeling this with as this moves to the east for Tuesday and Wednesday. And at the same time, all these warm temperatures are going to move across the southeast as you go from Monday into Tuesday. There is going to be a severe weather aspect for this as well. So National Weather Service does have a chance for tornadoes for today. You have a 2% chance for tornadoes, chance for wind, especially in this 15% area, and some chances for hail. You have a lot of lightning strikes and there is chances for large hail. But the tornado chance for today is going to be mostly for Sioux Falls, South Dakota, Fargo, North Dakota, Sioux City, Iowa, St. Cloud, Minnesota, and Grand Forks, North Dakota. And you can see with your dew points that it does bring some strong dew points up towards the upper Midwest. Really, they're in the 60s for tomorrow. For Texas, you're going to be in the 70s. So you have a better chance of tornadoes for tomorrow than you do for today. There's still a chance for today. So it will be a chance. It is a slight chance. But it looks like you're in the 60 dew points as these storms crew up. And for tomorrow, look, at you're in the 70 dew points for the chances for tornadoes in Texas. And this will carry over into Tuesday as you get severe weather in the south as well. Now you can see with your lift, your cape, that it does get some strong cape, not super strong, mostly for eastern Nebraska, Iowa, Minnesota, even portions of the Dakota, you could see some thunderstorms, maybe even some thunder snow if the temperatures move in fast enough. But still you have a chance for some lift to get tornadoes from this area. And as you go from 6 and 7 p.m., you see how it's mostly going to be Dakotas and Minnesota, maybe northern Iowa. All this cape, all this lift is moving far north rather quickly. But there is a chance. There is some lift in that area. And as you go for tomorrow, look at it in Texas. You get even stronger cape, even stronger lift that comes with these thunderstorms, 
chances for tornadoes out of that as well. So when you look at your wind shear, you can see that right around five and six o'clock, it really starts picking up. But when you get around seven, it's always shows 7 p.m. that the winds will really start to pick up and that will give you your shear on these thunderstorms all the way to nine and 10 o'clock, even up till midnight, you still have strong winds for Southern Minnesota, Iowa, Eastern Kansas, as well as Northern Missouri. So it'll be a lot of strong thunderstorms coming out of that, but chances for damage and wind, definitely. But right around six o'clock, you do get a lot of lightning strikes, even chances for large hail for Northern Iowa, Eastern South Dakota, Minnesota. All even along, these thunderstorms burst up and chances for large hail and all of these white. This is a lot of lightning strikes, a lot of chances for large hail, mostly for Northern Iowa and Minnesota is what I can see. And then for tomorrow for Texas, these lightning strikes and thunderstorms will brew right back up again. Do have some chances for some hail, not as strong as today, and chances for tornadoes and frontline storms as well going into tomorrow night. Also carrying over to the southeast for Tuesday. Not as severe as what we have for today and possibly tomorrow morning, but you still got some severe weather for Tuesday as well. So for tomorrow, National Weather Service does have a chance for some tornadoes, a 2% chance for Texas. Chances for high winds as well for tomorrow for Texas, Arkansas, as well as western Louisiana, and some chances for hail. So your chances for tornadoes tomorrow for Monday is going to be for Houston, Texas, Austin, Texas, Waco, Texas, Tyler, Texas, and Round Rock, Texas. And you can see how your cape, your lift, does brew up all afternoon long for tomorrow. Then after you get around 4 and 5 p.m., then it's southern Texas that has that lift that still has more thunderstorms and straight line winds that's coming with this system. All together, already starting for today, you have 50 and 60 miles per hour wind gusts, and this will carry up to the upper Midwest all afternoon long until tomorrow morning, and then Texas will have the chances for winds for tomorrow as well. Still showing widespread high 40s, get into the 50s and the 60s, even get up to 70 and 80 and possibly 90 miles per hour wind gusts as you go through New Mexico, higher elevations of Colorado, and Texas getting 40 and 50 miles per hour wind gusts as well. And you can see the difference with HRRR and NAM 3K. So the next 48 hours, according to high resolution rapid refresh, you do get a nice long of heavy rainfall still coming to a drought stricken area that we do need this rainfall. But you see how heavy it is. And when you look at the NAM 3K, it's so much more different. It is so much better of a high resolution model with the HRRR than the NAM 3K. Still, the NAM 3K shows after 48 hours that it is going to be more rainfall coming with this system. Plus, as you go into Tuesday, your chances for severe weather. You do have a 5% chance as well as a 15% chance in this area. So I will update you as this gets a little bit closer, but so far, this is your cities and states at risk. Now for today, you don't have the chances for the flash flooding, but for tomorrow, you're gonna have a big chance for flash flooding all this marginal, as well as this slight risk. And as you go into Tuesday, this will move a little further to the east and north with a marginal chance for flash flooding out of this system. Now most of this blue is all three to five inches, but all this pink for Montana, Dakotas, also for Canada, this is all seven inches to over a foot, as well as the higher elevations for Wyoming and Colorado as well. You also can see the eight o'clock update with National Hurricane Center that we still have this invest in the Atlantic is still 10% in the next 48 hours, 20% in the next five days. I'm still showing no worries from this, guys. This is going to go up towards the northeast a little bit, somewhat weak, and then the cold front is going to push it away. That never showed a threat. Our threat always showed brewing somewheres around this region late October, early November. You can also see with the potential velocity anomaly showing favorable environment or unfavorable that we are still coming into a very favorable environment for the beginning of November. To all my friends in the Caribbean, I really hope you all been paying attention the last couple weeks talking about this wave because we're getting closer and closer. And you can see right here within the next five to six days that this tropical wave will start going towards the leeward and windward islands. And so far what we have this morning that it will sit there and take days and days for it to strengthen up. But it finally strengthens up to something major this morning. It shows a very major hurricane that could go by Dominican Republic, maybe even by Puerto Rico, trying to go west 
but it can't because it says that we have a cold front coming in the beginning of November. But when you look at North Atlantic Oscillation, see if we're going in a high ridge or a deep trough with that cold front in the beginning of November, you can see here with the GFS that maybe it's coming, maybe it won't come and it'll go further to the west. So I will keep you updated. It's definitely showing a lot of strength for the beginning of November. But as far as how far west in the Caribbean, I don't see it going too far west. But this will impact a lot of people in the Caribbean. So I will stay on top of this for you guys. And the pressure on this this morning shows that it will fumble around a tropical depression, a tropical storm for six days before finally forming up, but it does form up something strong and fierce this morning, showing a major hurricane going down to the 930s, passing by Puerto Rico and Dominican Republic. A very scary cyclone if this does show true. And so far, right where all that favorable environment is, is where all the strength comes in. The very beginning of November, showing it getting all the way down to a 938 a very strong hurricane. And the Euro sees it as well, a very strong chance for something to grow up, very favorable environment, the very beginning of November. It also sees that we could have another one of these later on, right at the end of hurricane season, right around the 15th through the 20th of November. But thank you so much for visiting my channel today. I just wanna give you all a quick update on what your potential impacts are today. I don't wanna take up too much of your time. Happy Sunday to all of you. Hope you have a very blessed day today. If you're in the Caribbean, please stay alert. I'm still showing that at the beginning of November, we have some very strong coming. And what we can see in the model data is starting to look very worrisome. So I will stay updated on y'all just to keep y'all going. Make sure you check in to Brian, Mr. Weatherman. He covers all of the Caribbean all the time. He will be tracking this, I'm sure, as well. Psalm 56. Be merciful unto me, O God. For man would swallow me up. He fighting daily oppresseth me. Mine enemies would daily swallow me up. For they be many that fight against me, O thou most high. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. In God I will praise his word. In God I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. Every day they rest my words. All their thoughts are against me for evil. They gather themselves together. They hide themselves. They mark my steps when they wait for my soul. Shall they escape by iniquity? In thine anger cast down the people, O God. Thou tellest my wonderings. Put thou my tears into thy bottle. Are they not in thy book? When I cry unto thee, then shall mine enemies turn back. This I know. For God is for me. In God will I praise his word. In the Lord will I praise his word. In God have I put my trust. I will not be afraid what man can do unto me. Thy vows are upon me, O God. I will render praises unto thee. For thou hast delivered my soul from death. Wilt not thou deliver my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the light of the living. Amen. Have a very great and a very blessed Sunday, everyone. I am going to start adding promotions and sponsors in these videos to help keep in our generator giveaways going, also to help feed our family programs to help support that as well. So that's where all the money for these promotions will go that you will start seeing in my videos. It's pretty much a pause for the cause. <laughs> All glory does go to God, our Father in heaven. And I pray he keeps all of you safe forever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Have a great Sunday, everybody.